All right, Alex, I am recording. Mm -hmm. um, all right, yes, yeah, so we're good. Uh, so, Zach, this is, I'm Andrew. I was the one texting with you and Ilias. And okay. you guys uh, introduced yourselves. What's up, man? I'm Josh. Oh, I'm Michael. Yeah, I thought we were getting too longer introduction. I'm Alex. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is Alex. And so first, you want to kind of talk about how do you know Ilias? Uh, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's my boy. So we've been doing stuff together, some business and stuff like that. So that's how I know him. Sure. All right. And uh, you want to talk about just a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Zach Parker. Went to, I'm from Western Virginia, played uh, football at Liberty University. I some time with the Redskins and then uh, over in Montreal Alouettes, over in Canada in CFL. I'm, uh, I got a season coming up in March. I'm either doing the CFL again. I'll probably do um, British Columbia or so, BC Lions. So I'm just doing that. I'm doing marketing right now. Um, I have a, a cannabis brand I'm doing right now as well. So we're trying to get that uh, pushing and stuff like that. So that's what I have going on right now. That's very cool. Very cool. Cool. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll kind of get straight into it. So I am sure Elise has ta talked to you a little bit about what we do. Um, so mainly we are focused on building NFTs and trying to get those into as many different cross disciplinary paths as possible. And right now we have our own path, but we definitely think there's room to grow in pretty much any field. Uh, so right now I can talk about like more about the project itself, but do you want to kind of explain like what like whatever Elise has told you about us? Um, yeah, I mean, he told me he told me a little bit about you guys, so I'm just trying to get an introduction now from you guys. He only told me like such a small portion, so if you guys can, you know, just keep going on, I'll uh, get a better understanding of what you guys are trying to do and what you guys do. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I can give a brief description, and any of you guys feel free to jump in as well. Um, so right now, we're creating an NFT project that is used to. <laughs> I don't know, you guys, what it's, do you say? It's, so our NFT project, Astro Kingdom, it's its main purpose right now is we're, we're marketing based off Zodiac signs, right? So for this month, it's Capricorn. And then for the next, I don't, I don't know what the next month is, but you know the gist. So every month we're gonna do a drop where it's gonna be the next Zodiac sign. There's gonna be customization, everything, more rare NFTs, and there's gonna be more of your basic ones, right? And what we're trying to move into is when the metaverse is fully created, right? We want to be able to implement our ways, our, our way into it where we can allow people to continue to like kind of dive into themselves by connecting with their own spirituality. And by doing that, they'd not only be able to connect in the virtual world, but they'd stay grounded in the physical. Yeah, that sounds dope though. Yeah, so the, the plan is to pretty much use this current NFT collection to fuel the development of this, these future technologies that should hopefully come into play, who knows how far in the future, maybe a year, maybe two years or so on. So right now we're focusing on the zodiac signs just because those have set characteristics and they're related to spirituality in some way. But the goal is to create the technology to apply to anyone for any sort of uh, way they want to like either stay grounded in their spirituality or maybe self-development through physical health or what have you. So it's very open-ended, but we're just choosing uh, the Zodiacs as the first collection and we intend to expand from there. Yeah, it's it's, it's just, a, it's a very uh, popular topic. I mean, because of the pandemic, uh, astrology grew to a $2.2 .2 billion industry. So everyone has been trying to get in tune with like, you know, their rising moons or their like, uh, what is it? Uh, like there's whole, there's so many different variants that go into Zodiacs and astrology that it's bound to connect with certain people. But yeah, that's not dope, man. That should take off for sure. Uh, I do have a question for you though. So like, because because you have like an athletic background in the NFL and the CFL um, and the Spring League, I saw I saw that. Yeah, um, yeah I was in the Spring League, so. Uh, like when when it comes to like players and like athletes on the professional level, um, are they are they continuously you know trying to find deeper meetings in themselves or are they just trying to get on that grind to you know be maybe like an all pro player or that's everything because like for me i'm i'm a lacrosse player and lacrosse is is kind of a spiritual sport so a lot of players are really in tune with themselves but i'm not sure about like football players like so i mean it, it, yeah i mean everyone's uh trying to find another way to be more you know spiritual and stuff like that um you know because like I said, you know, football can end any day, so they trying to find like other ways, you know, that they can yeah. tune into, you know, more spiritual world or God itself or anything like that. So definitely, uh, probably the same thing as you, you know. 
Cool. And what, what would be in like going off of that uh, question, like what is, what is important to you? Like what, what do you try to find in yourself since, since you've taken somewhat of a break from athletics and you're, you're um, uh, moving to other areas? I mean, I think right now, like since I've been off uh, for a couple of months or so, just finding like the right, cause I have other, I have other businesses and stuff I'm doing. Um, so I'm just trying to, you know, just try to find the right team and stuff like that. Team that will keep you positive and keep your uh, your mindset in the same, you know, path, positive and stuff like that, not negative. So, I mean, that's that's type of spiritual, you know, essentially the spiritual world too, positive and a negative, you know. So I try to keep, you know, people around me that are positive at all times and uh, stuff like that. So do you find do you find that like your teammates or anyone like a these athletes, do they also have these other side hustles going on or are they into NFTs or are they even aware of like what's going on underground? So, I mean, to be honest, most of the people that play sports and stuff, they really just like most of them only have, you know, that only the sports, you know. So if you can do more than that, then you'll be, you know, better off after, you know, football ends. So, I mean, you can get hurt tomorrow and, you know, it'll be, you know, your career will be over if you don't have nothing else to fall back on. So, I mean, uh, definitely, uh, like I said, I have a lot of stuff going on. So, you know, like I said, a lot of people don't have a lot of stuff going on. So I try to like push that on towards other people. Like my, uh, one of my uh, friends, uh, Shakir Ryan, he's with the Rams, the Chargers. Uh, he played with the Montreal Alouettes with me um, and a couple other CFL teams. He just started a, a, a party bus company. Like when he stopped playing football, like the season got canceled. So he did a party bus company. It's going really well right now. Uh, they're like booked up for like the next couple months. So. He's doing that. So I was talking to him about maybe doing something like that over on this side in the DMV area. And I like go half with him on the bus and stuff like that. So that was that was what I was gonna do with him. So, you know. Thanks. No. I, I have to say like, when it comes to like with your business models, what other, like either than like the party bus, what personally like do you have any, like what ideas do you have personally that you're really, really adamant about? So I think, I mean, right now I'm doing the, me and my partner are doing the cannabis brands. I think, I mean, I think that's a pretty good, that's going to be big really soon. Cause you know, it just got legal July 1st or whatever. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're trying to, we're pushing that right now. I have the social media following of like 800 to 900,000 followers on Instagram and TikTok. So I'm just trying to figure out how to uh, get that rolling on the platforms and stuff too. So, I mean, if we can get that rolling now, it will be pretty big once it, you know, takes off in the next couple of months or a year or so. So. That's what I'm focused on right now. That and football right now, that's the two main things right now, so. Yeah, I mean, we do have some ideas uh, to help with that, but Alex, do you have a point that you want to bring up? Uh, yeah, I just had a question. So, um, you know, in a, in a career like football where so much can change so quick, um, are there things that you kind of go back to when you might have a, like a bad practice or might drop a few passes? Are there any things that you kind of go back to to kind of calm yourself down or like enter your end space? Uh. I mean, I might, like, if I have a bad practice song, I might go home and listen to some old songs or something that, you know, keep me up or something like that. And then obviously go do the same thing. If I miss some balls or something, go catch a bunch of passes and stuff like that. So, I mean, those two things would uh, get me right for the day, for the next day to move on. Okay, so a lot of times it seems like you, you like to visualize, like, how you could do better um, and how you yeah. can perform better. All right. Exactly. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so... You're putting some thought into um, like your following. So like right now, like how engaged do you think your followers are in terms of you as an athlete versus you as like a businessman? Would you say most of your followers want to see you like like thrive as an athlete or like more so with these business ventures? I mean, I got different type of fans. So I mean, I got people that that like my football that follow me for football, and I got people that follow me just for me. And I got people that follow me for like you know my influence or stuff like that. So I mean, it's really like a three four way of you know people that that follow me. So I mean. As long as like I'm progressing in life, I feel like all four of those uh, type of fan bases are gonna be intrigued and and like want to see me do better. So, I mean, that's that's the answer to that question. Gotcha. Yeah. So, do you guys have any uh, questions before I get into the NFTs? No, no the questions are about NFTs. All right. Yeah, yeah. Send it. Um, yeah. So first, um, a lot of the the plans that we have in terms of. The, these high follower rate, like let's say influencers and these NFTs, it comes down to the smart contracts. Like, are you familiar with that that term or like the concept? 
No, I'm not too familiar with the NFTs. Uh, my next ex, my next door neighbor, he does a bunch of NFTs. Like he, he just bought like a couple of the ape ones and stuff like that. I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, but you know the apes or whatever. Mm-hmm. He just bought some of those. Um, he was saying like something you could like enter different things if you have those or something like that. So I know he bought a couple of those things like that. And uh, no, I'm not too familiar about this stuff though. So I mean, I'm just learning it while y'all talking. Yeah. So right now, um, like those apes, that's like an artwork, and that's kind of how NFTs are known right now. But on like the back end all these nfts are a specific code that's like it's called an, an nft because it's non-fungible which means it can't be duplicated or replicated it's literally like a one, of, one of one so these codes are pretty much the important parts and so that's where the, the follower rates come and uh, i can get more into that but if you guys want to throw some questions and we'll uh well yeah. so you said you don't you don't know too much about nfts but like what is your initial thought about them because i know everyone's kind of heard things about them whether that be positive or negative um but like what's What's your perspective on them before we get really into like talking deeply about them? Well, I mean, uh, I mean, for one, I know, I mean, I know they're important. I just don't know too much about it. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So a cool, the cool okay. aspect. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just. So a cool yeah. aspect about them is that uh, they can be used as a sort of membership type of thing. Um, a lot of times, if you have it, it could be like your identif- identification card or your membership card. Um, it seems like you do. Um, a lot of stuff with different uh, clubs and stuff. Do you think that that is something you would like to incorporate one day into maybe one of your clubs as a way to identify people? I mean, yeah. So, I mean, we can all get together or whatever the case is and figure out how we can, you know, do something with NFTs and stuff. That would be dope. Yeah, so um, right now with NFTs, um, let's say people were to buy our NFTs. All right, actually, I'm just going to show you. Um, yeah. So I made this uh, like graphic to help explain everything because a lot of it does kind of come down to like the financial side of things and um, I'll give you a second. All right. You ready? I'm sorry. All right. Um, so right now I'll show you the, uh, the website that we are creating that we have already created. So it's up here. We're the Astral Kingdom. Um, uh, I, we can only see your notes or your notebook. Oh, bad, bad. All right, hold up. All right. So this is the website that we've created, um, the Astral Kingdom. And if you go down, you can uh, you can register for the sale. And this is where you can actually buy one of the NFTs. And so, so for you as an influencer, we were thinking about giving you like a discount code. You can think of it as like an affiliate marketing right now. Where let's right. say people were to buy it, they put it in their name and then your, your discount code and they were to buy it. And then if you go to here, you can see like how much money I guess you would be making from all that, all those transactions. So if we're selling 1,000 NFTs and you have a, a total followers, let's, I just gave a, a low estimate of like 300,000. That means right. you have to get, if you were to sell all of them with your discount code, you'd only need 0.33% of your followers to, to actually buy, which yeah. <clears throat> that seems very doable. Um, right. And with the price of an NFT being 285 bucks, with the way that, that uh, down here the way the nfts actually work is that with each transaction a percentage would go to you the one that actually uses the discount code as opposed to like right now if you were to use a discount code to buy like a clothing like an item um then you would just get the one transaction here and the owner can resell it but that money would not go back to you who had the original discount code so that's kind of how um right here i don't know if you guys want to jump in yeah no i was gonna explain one thing because um probably because i i didn't know anything about nfts until maybe like maybe like a month or two ago mm-hmm. something like that and i would say the biggest um thing for me to understand when i was first uh looking into them was the fact that um these things when when you sell one you like let's say you bought one for me right let's say i just minted one and then you bought one for me and in the smart contract, that's what we've been talking about, um, I would still get 10% of every resale after. So that's like a big concept to, to understand where if I sell to you and I sell for $200, you buy for you buy for me for $200, then if you sell to someone else for $500, I'll make 10% of that $500 and then you'll make, uh, what, 450 then? Mm-hmm. You make $450, I'd still make 50. And then if the person that you just sold it to sells it again, oh, yeah then I would make more money. So every single time it's transacted, the, the original person who created it or you being the person who gives out the discount code would get a percentage of that. So 
every time somebody would use your discount code, you'd put this asset basically into the market. And then every single time it's being passed around to different people, you're making a cut. And that's similar to what, what Andrew was saying about if you're just selling clothes and then, and then somebody uses your discount uh, code to buy a t-shirt, if that person gives their t-shirt to someone else or sells it, you know, flips yes. it, you're not going to make any money. So this makes it so that it's not just uh, an item that somebody buys, it's an asset that you're putting into the market to then every single time anyone else touches it or passes it around or sells it or, or anything, you make more money. And then the another incentive that I think is really important for you, right? So what have you have you seen like Lil Babies or Seth Curry's like uh, profile picture on Twitter? Yeah. Yeah, and how it's the how it's the the, the ape NFT or like one of the right. variants. Yeah. For them and for you, if you were if you were to put an NFT as your logo, not only would people that would let people know that you own the NFT, but if you wanted to sell it, you would make an exuberant amount of money just based off of your influence on other people. Yeah, because it becomes like a bidding war at that point. Because like if you have that NFT, you put it as a profile picture. Every like let's say you had a hundred people who you know they're some of your biggest fans and they're just in a bidding war to buy that nft because they want it so bad since you owned it and if then if you if you then sell it to them and then let's say it skyrockets in value a thousand percent then you're gonna make money off the fact that it just blew up in value so and that could happen at any time randomly yeah, yeah i like that i like that definitely need to get an nft going yeah so like right now all you really have to do is just get 1,000 of these sold, whether that be from one person buying 1,000 NFTs or 1,000 people buying one NFT, you would still make a, a, a percentage, or I guess like we would all make a percentage of each transaction from there. So that, that's something we can do today. Um, moving down the line with the, like the party bus and everything like that, there's still a lot of different ways that we can bring NFTs into businesses such as that. Um, yeah. I'm not sure that's something that you're interested in discussing right now, but there's, I actually have a, I have a like, so, Yesterday we had a podcast with someone from uh, Richmond, and he was talking about um, pairing tickets with NFTs, right? And it could be the same kind of concept for the party bus. So, for each person, say someone wants to schedule an event, right? And the event is, you know, they're they're having X amount of people. For each person that they're adding on, they get some sort of like code or NFT to go with it, right? right. And this is all based on price. So if you have 20 people on the bus, each person would be paying a portion of that total price. Um, and depending on how, where they're going, what they're doing on the bus, like let's say they wanna have like a super luxurious time on the bus, you know, they want all drinks, they want bottles, they want everything, they want a whole whole shebang. Yeah. They would be able to get like the premium pass, right? So they would get a really, a really custom NFT. And then for the people that, you know, are just using the bus, to, you know, pregame before they go to whatever club or something that they're going to, they would just get something basic, right? And that could be almost an incentive because for the people who pay that premium, they can now be like, okay, well, now I have an NFT that I can now resell for way, like a, a lot more money than I actually purchased this party bus for. And then the other incentive for you is because you're the one who gave them that NFT or we collabed with you and we presented this nft for you to give out you're not only making your payment off the party bus but now you're making a percentage off of the nft sold the resales of yeah. the tickets because yep. re reselling of tickets happens all the time yep. especially when they when when you well, they're not, sold out now with the party bus. okay well I'm, yeah. I'm saying like even i mean even if um you weren't having an increased amount of reselling yeah they could still skyrocketing skyrocket in value if let's say videos of the party bus oh. go viral or yeah. something happens where um there's so many people want that one nft to go on that night yeah. you know well what i'm saying is as in like when he sells you know a certain price for a certain type of a certain type of event on the party bus or a certain type of you know oh, you're talking about like right. actual activities yes on the bus. activities on the bus oh, okay. and like not the actual tickets to just no get no no oh, because okay. you usually when you have a party bus you have a set group of people that you're going with and you pay for that that amount right gotcha. and there's different like variants that you can do like you can just get like the average and you can get you know the the private plus or whatever yeah, That's yeah, yeah, yeah. so oh, that's that would be that would be a pretty interesting incentive that could be done. Um, 
and even even like yesterday we talked about the same thing when it comes since uh since you're into like a lot of the club scenes if someone asks you to promote they could use a discount code and any person that used your discount code could get an nft and depending on what level of payment they they were giving to the club to get in like say they wanted to buy a table or they're buying bottles they would get a really cool nft and for people that are just coming in the club they would just get some regular one right and that would be a, that would be another incentive because then you're making money and then you're making double money off that nft if it's sold yeah yeah uh, that's a good idea too yeah another possibility is let's say we give you a discount code and your fans buy the NFTs that we're giving out. And then we can track who exactly has used your, your discount code to own the NFTs. And from there, let's say you go off in a football game, you have some like crazy highlights that we can create into NFTs as well. We can airdrop those into the holders, like into their wallets, which then they can go sell and get free money. So that's an incentive for your fans to want to be involved with this as much as you are. And then you'd get a percentage of those transactions after the airdrop is done and then they go to sell it. Oh yeah, I'm down bro. Yeah, so we have a, a drop coming up on the 21st and so we could actually try to get this set up uh within the next week or so and try to get to see how the first one goes and we plan we have like no plans on slowing down with these releases after this first month this is just like a trial run to make sure everything is actually working well and there's a demand for this and we have everything working like, logistically on the back end so we could actually make this a reality yeah let's do it man let's do it we can have, have another talk we can have another talk yeah we're trying to get Ilias in this as well Try to get yeah, some marketing talk in a couple of days or so, and then uh, get something going for the for the twenty first. Yeah, sounds good. Um, Alex, do you have any uh, any thoughts? Uh, it's it's really cool, especially how we were uh, talking about the whole concept of airdropping. Um, this could be really beneficial, especially for your business, where um, if you have a certain group of people that have uh, bought an NFT from you before, you can go and. Uh, basically select those specific individuals and continue promoting them through airdrops. Um, and then you have that set group, and then from there you can keep adding more people if they're if they're more interested or if the base keeps growing. Yeah, I'm with it, bro. Uh, do you have any uh, any thoughts or questions that you have for us? Nah, not right now. I mean, I'm just I'm just taking everything in. I want to definitely get together again um, in a couple of days or so, and then just get everything you know worked out, planned, so we can get going on the 21st. So. I mean, that's all I, you know, that's all I really had left. Yeah, yeah sounds good. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll stay in touch then. Yes. Of course, Thank man. You. Appreciate you guys for having me, man. Definitely. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Thank, Thank you. you.